If I'm going to be spending upwards of $100 for a candle, this is the type of quality I expect from it. Today, we'll be discussing a candle from a brand on my wish list, a long anticipated brand for me personally. Hey, what's up? I'm Rakima. Welcome to Detailed Dream, where the primary focus is to expose you to the expansive world of luxury goods for yourself and your home. It's now a couple weeks later since I picked up the Rue Saint Honoré candle from Asta de Villat, which is a brand I've been wanting to bring to the channel for such a long time. They were also part of my wish list for this year, and I'm excited to finally have a discussion on Asta de Villat after experiencing one of their candles because the quality exceeds my expectations on what I consider to be a high-end luxury candle and fragrance house. Definitely deserves a seat at the table with other high-end brands with the likes of Cirque du Dawn and Mad Atlant, for example. Asta de Villat is an S-tier brand for sure, and that's for a couple great reasons. Starting with the brand, this isn't a brand that started centuries ago or anything. Asta de Villat is a fairly recent brand, depending on how you look at it, compared to some other really old candle houses. It was founded in 1996 by Ivan Pericoli and Benoit Asté de Villat, along with other family members in France from the School of École des Beaux Arts. Correct me if I'm wrong, it's one of the best, if not the best, fine art school in Paris. This group of friends started off creating unique furniture pieces, tableware, and ceramics. One of the things I found most interesting with how this brand came about was that they started without any knowledge on tableware and how to create it. I mean, I'm sure they had some sort of idea with what they've learned in school, but it all started with just a will to create something. They started by inventing what they call dream objects, which is furniture inspired by discarded items picked up at night and other objects found at different flea markets. The meaning of one man's trash is another man's treasure. They took the knowledge they've learned at Beaux Arts to create the first objects of Asta de Vlat, which in turn started to give the brand some traction. After some time, Ivan and Benoit were left to run the brand on their own and built a large reputation only by word of mouth. In the early 2000s, they opened up the shop of their dreams in Rue Saint Honoré that would help them keep up with all the orders they were receiving. Ironically, it's the candle scent I chose to review. More on this in a moment, it's just as good as the brand. In 2008, they had an idea to launch scented dishwashing liquid, but it was only for fun. What's the worst that can happen, right? Well, this very idea of creating scented dishwashing liquid resulted in thousands of sales. It quickly became an extremely popular seller for the brand and in turn exposed them to the world of other scented products. Asta de Villat took the success of the dishwashing liquid as a sign and partnered up with some of the best perfumers in the world, such as Francois Caron, for example. Which, if you remember, is the creator of Eau d'Orange Vert from Hermes. If you haven't seen that conversation on the body wash and lotion, I will have a link in the description. With the help of these talented perfumers, they were able to create different products such as Eau de Cologne, hand cream, and of course, candles. Later on, they expanded on their scent products by offering Japanese-made incense with the help of incense makers in Owaji. It's an island in Japan specialized in the manufacturing of incense for hundreds of years. Asta de Vellant is built around the formation of friendships that each has their own unique stories. What you see today has come to be only from an idea and the will to just create something. I guess I see a part of myself in the story behind Asta de Vellant, which is one of the things that has me very excited to explore the many scents they have to offer, especially after spending time with the Rue Saint Honoré scent, which is named after the store location in Paris. I'm guessing that's their flagship store, I'm not sure. Another place to check off my list when I visit Paris. You can also find these candles in the States as well. I remember seeing them at 80s Perfumery in New York, and if you're in Los Angeles, they can be found at the Scent Bar locations and French, which is located in Calabasas. I chose to take a little drive there since one of you told me 
they had the largest Asadev lot collection. And I can confirm, it did not disappoint. The back end of the store is basically exclusive Asadev lot. I didn't know where to start or what to sniff first. There were ceramics and stationary items there as well. But I don't recall seeing the perfumes though. I was there mainly for the incense and candles anyway. I am on the fence about the dishwashing liquid. I was going to pick that up as well, but I honestly never tried any luxury dish soap. I know Diptyque just released dishwashing liquid as well, but I'm not completely sold on it. Let me know if you tried it or the Asta Lot dish soap and how you liked it. If this video gets 500 likes, I'll pick them both up for a comparison video. Let me know what you think. As far as the candles, the quality of them are truly top tier. They smell as if they've been around for hundreds of years. Even with the brand identity, if I did know, I would guess they were around when Sutra Dawn first started their fragrance house. The visionary perfumers they've partnered with has done a remarkable job with these scent creations. They state the success of the brand is due to systematic research for the finest ingredients and not just for the scents. This included French wax masters, Japanese incense masters, Tuscan glass makers, and Parisian letterpress printing. The focus is quality, and I got that inclination once I put my nose to their candles a couple years ago. Another thing that has me excited to tell you all about this house. There's this timeless feel to their candles that makes them stand out among the rest, along with the use of natural raw ingredients and wax that's vegetable based with a touch of beeswax for a more pure clean burn. The handcrafted blown glass vessels are made in Tuscany and has this transparent grayish hue to them with light tiny bubbles encased inside the glass. And if you look closely, you'll notice the top of the vessels will not be perfect. It has this uneven look to it that gives it that true handmade character. The vessel, along with the typography, strongly gives the feeling as if this brand has been around for centuries. The brand identity is noteworthy for sure. Now, the scent. It was very difficult deciding which one to pick up. There were a few I couldn't decide between, so I'll be picking those up next. I'm just glad I was able to control myself in the store, which isn't always the case when it comes to fragrances and candles. I decided to go with the fresh, powdery scent of Rue Saint Honoré. As always, my apologies if my pronunciation is a little off. This particular scent is based on the location of, I guess, the flagship store in Paris. Late afternoon, the boutique door opens on the asphalt of Old Paris. An enticing scent immediately floods the premises. A powdery cloud, a few delicate green notes, and a jasmine rose accord merge deliciously with the amber and leather atmosphere. That depiction of the scent is extremely accurate. This is a powdery green floral scent. Think of a fresh, soft, powdery perfume. Matter of fact, think of old money that lasts for generations. That's what this is. Money you received from your dear on Pearl. I'm telling you, you have to really like a powdery scent to enjoy the burn from this. The perfumer for Rue Saint Honoré is none other than Francois Caron. She's also the perfumer for a few other fragrances for this house as well. I believe this is more of a linear scent profile with a beautiful blend of soft, elegant notes of bergamot, Egyptian jasmine, rose absolute, ylang ylang, outer height notes, amber leather accord, and powdery musk. There's a good mix of bright notes up top on the opening. Especially with the bergamot, which is much needed and such a powdery scent. And going into the deep hearty notes with pungent outer hides, amber leather, and the most prominent powdery musk. On cold, that powder essence is more pronounced. Powdery musk and rose absolute together. Talk about a powdery powerhouse, but it's a soft, delicate powder that does lean more feminine, I can admit, but I enjoy it quite a bit during the morning hours. When this is burning, I do pick up more of that powdery essence, of course, but with these notes blended together, I pick up a bit of an, a green undertone as well. Not a strong green smell, but I can definitely pick up good hints of it. Almost like a soft powdery cloud meets the green luscious leaves of a floral garden. I honestly prefer the scent when it's burning over the scent on cold. There's just so much life to it. Mostly powdery, if you didn't already know. The cold throw is, I would say moderate. It isn't the strongest, but I am able to pick up the rose absolute and powdery musk when I'm close by. The hot throw is strong with performance. It throws an elegant, soft scent around a large size space with no problem. I enjoy this scent mostly in the morning hours going into the afternoon. This is a 9 ounce size vessel with a 60 to 70 hour burn time. It burns very clean with a vegetable and beeswax blend, a good blend for performance and sustainability. Now, while it does burn very slow, I noticed it does want to tunnel a bit, 
the very edges of the wax seem to have difficulty melting, so I have to re-spoil the aluminum foil to help get a full surface melt. On the site, it says, do not burn for more than three hours, so maybe they already know that it takes a little while for a full surface melt. I just don't like when candles hit the three hour mark because the wick starts to mushroom and the flame starts to dance like it's on fire. Not all candles will be perfect, but I'll keep an eye on this to see if I still have issues after the three hour mark. Overall, the scent is incredible and I'm happy to have it as part of the collection. Brand of the year? Who knows? We'll see in this year's candle awards.